So, I managed to rank number one on Google using content that was written by AI. In this video, I'm going to show you how I did it and my thoughts on the pros and cons of using AI written content. Let's go. So last year, GPT-3 came out. GPT-3 is hyper advanced artificial intelligence, which can write amazingly good content, which reads better than I can write for one. I didn't want to be left behind, so I started experimenting with AI bots about two months ago. I tried a couple of different ones, um, and honestly, I wasn't that impressed. Um, so I binned it off for a little bit and um, forgot about it. But then, more recently, I started hearing a lot of um, fuss about a tool called, called Conversion.ai. I thought, okay, I'll give it one more go. And I've got to say, I was very impressed, actually. And as the, uh, the title of this video says, I managed to rank number one with some of their content. I've also got quite a few articles I wrote with it that are ranking in position two and three, and a few more that are on page one as well. So rather than just sit here and uh, tell you about how great it is, I'm just going to show you a quick demo now of what it can do. Um, so yeah, and then we'll come back and I'll talk through sort of what I think about it, the pros and cons, and so on. So let's use Google Auto Suggest to come up with something to write an article about. Um, I'm going to go for what is the best way, and then we'll see what Google suggests. Best way to lose belly fat, lose weight, sleep, invest money, learn a language. Uh, learn a language sounds good. Let's go for that. So let's log into conversion.ai. Log in. And then once you've logged in, you're going to get all these different templates you can use. Content Improve is great. You can just chuck a basic piece of content in there. It'll make it much better, more interesting. And you've got to explain it to a child. That's really good. So you can chuck something that's quite complicated in there, and it'll simplify it and make it much easier to understand and read. Um, a sentence expander, that obviously expands a short sentence, makes it longer. And tons of other stuff in there, tons and tons. But the one I use all the time um, for writing blogs is the Long Form Assistant. And this just helps you write, obviously, long form articles. Um, so the more detail you put in here, the better the output generally. So first of all, describe the content you want to create. What is the best way to learn a language is our keyword, isn't it? So please write. You don't have to say please, but it's nice to be nice, isn't it? Please write a step-by-step -step guide on the best way to learn a language. I'll put detailed in there too. Best way to learn a language. Keyword. What is the best way to learn a language? Title. He can generate some for me. How to learn a language, a step-by-step -step guide. Yeah, let's use that one. Intro paragraph. Let's generate some ideas. Let's see what it comes up with. And once you've got all that, we're good to start writing the article. Here we go. Learn a language can be an intimidating task. We don't have to be. Follow a step-by-step -step guide. You assume you're speaking like a native. That sounds good. I like that. Open editor. So there we go. We've got an opening paragraph there. We've got a blank page. You've also got this big compose button here with the output length section there. You've got three output length options. I'm not sure exactly what the words are, but long seems to be sort of maybe double this length, medium about that length, short, maybe half that length roughly. Um, but let's put it to long and see what he says. So there's sort of your, your heading there, step one. Step two. No, I don't know a great deal about how to learn a language. So what they say is when you finish, you should write a few words in there. I think it's 10 words to kind of guide him on what to write next, um, which can be difficult if, like me, you don't know a great deal about the topic in question. One little trick I've found to get around this is copy and paste it back in, and suddenly it's good to go again. Let's try medium this time, just so you can see the difference. There we go. I'll try that trick again. It doesn't always work here. You see, it hasn't worked this time. No, it doesn't like that. He's on to me. Um, best way is usually through intensive study with an immersion method, such as a week long course. That'll do. Compose with a tutor, often reading in the language. If you join listening to audio lessons and follow along by an online course such as Plimsoo Word Music Language Program, 
Um, there you go. So, I mean, you can see it reads pretty well, to be honest. Um, a lot of the time it, it writes better than I do. I think the things to watch out for are when it's, say, when it's talking about facts and figures, double check those because it does seem to make them up for some reason. Um, and just be careful sort of about um, your headings, make sure that it's kind of clearly differentiated between each section. Um, but yeah, in one of my upcoming videos, I'm going to do um, a video on how I write a long form article, a thousand words using this. It's going to be a lot more detailed. It's going to show you how I structure my articles using this, how I fact check it um, and all that kind of thing. So this is just a quick overview just to show you what it can do. If you like what you see, do use my link um, in the description below. I think if you do that, you get a few credits, um, and so do I. So it's a win for you and a win for me. So please do have a look at that. Check it out. As you can see, it's not too shabby. Um, in terms of pricing, there's two options. There's $29 a month, um, which gives you up to 20,000 words of content you can produce with it. Or there is an unlimited um, pricing option, which is $109 a month. And you can just produce as many words as you want with that. You also get access to the long form editor, which I use to um, write the long form blog posts. Um, so it's well worth the money. For me, I typically pay about $30 a thousand words when I'm outsourcing my content. So if I were to write only 4,000 words a month with conversion.ai, I would have covered my expenses there. So it's well worth the money. Um, as I said before, I put a, a link below if you want to have a go, try it out. So, how did I rank number one using conversion.ai? Well, let me be clear from the start, the uh, keyword I ranked for wasn't a particularly difficult keyword. It was a long tail one. There's about 40 searches a month for it. And the sites ranking top were forums. So it was there for the taking. It was an easy one to rank top for. Um, what I did was I wrote 750 words of content using Jarvis. And with a bit of guidance, I was easily able to make something that read much better than those forum posts and deserved to rank better. So it was fairly simple really because I was going after a low competition keyword. Um, the article that Jarvis produced was just as good if not better than something I would have written myself and it took a tiny fraction of the time, probably took less than 10 minutes altogether to bang that article out and I managed to get a number one position with it. Um, as I said, I've probably put out about 15, 16 articles now um, with Jarvis and they all rank um, pretty well. Um, quite a few of them are on page one. I think I've got three or four that are in the top three positions. Um, and the sort of ranking as well as I would expect something I'd written or one of my writers would have written to, uh, to rank. So my thoughts on AI content. When I first heard about it, I was honestly a bit scared, a bit apprehensive um, about AI content. And I was a bit disappointed when I, I ranked pretty well with it. Um, and my reasons for that are that I spent quite a long time, a good few years, sort of building up my website portfolio. Initially, a lot of that content I spent hours and hours producing myself. Um, more recently, I've sort of outsourced quite a lot of it. Um, so I've put a lot of time and money into building up my um, portfolio of websites. And now there's a bot that could potentially, you know, build a similar site with similar content, um, you know, in a fraction of the time and for a fraction of the cost that it's cost me. Um, so for that reason, AI content scares me. So recently I've seen a few articles floating around like this. Now I'm no algorithm expert, but I really don't see how Google could work out which content is written by Jarvis and which isn't because the stuff he writes reads just as well as any human written stuff. In fact, better in most cases. Um, there's no code in the HTML or anything that says this was written by a bot. Um, I think the only way that Google could really work out it's being written by AI is if the rate at which the content is being churned out is just so fast that it'd be humanly impossible to do that. But even in that case, you know, Google aren't going to know if you've got a huge team of, of writers, a huge team of freelancers who are producing content for you. So I don't think there's any way that Google are going to start penalizing AI written content. AI content isn't without its downsides though. Um, a few pros before I jump into the cons. Um, Obviously, it's super fast to write stuff. Um, it gets rid of writer's block altogether. If you just can't get started, it'll do that for you. And also, you can write a good article on something that you have absolutely no idea about because Jarvis will basically do it for you. Um, however, there are cons, so let's jump into those. So con number one, you need to fact check everything 
he says. Um, one of the things with Jarvis is he's good at putting out content that reads well, but he isn't great at checking sources and getting stuff factually correct. If you've got sort of facts and figures in your article, sometimes you just make up figures which are completely wrong. So you always need to double check them, which does take some time. There's a bit of a pain. Another thing, if you're writing on a very specific topic in uh, detail, Jarvis sort of often doesn't really, isn't really capable of going to the depth that you want him to, or he doesn't seem to want to. He needs a lot of guidance to really get that level of detail that you're after. Um, and sometimes it's easier just to write yourself if you are writing in that much detail. Um, and finally, you need to give him a lot of um, input to make sure that the structure is good to the article. Um, if you just let him go for it, and give sort of minimal input. You have to do quite a lot of editing at the end to make it flow and make it sort of make the structure make sense, if you know what I mean. So in terms of going forward for me, I will definitely be con continuing to use it. Um, I did at one point consider getting rid of at least one of my writers in favor of Jarvis. But as I said, the issue with having to fact check everything made me rethink that. And I think it'll just be easier for me to, at the moment to uh, keep that writer on. Um, and just so for myself I write about 20% of my own content so when I'm writing that content I will use it um, but I won't be replacing any of my writers with it yet because it's just not worth the effort I have to spend all my time sort of writing the content they were going to write fact checking it um, sorting the structures out and everything so at the moment I will be keeping all my writers on and um, but using it to supplement my own work and my own writing so there we go I hope you found that useful interesting in some way um, do let me know your thoughts and comments below um, are you scared of AI content will you consider using it yourself are you already using it and um, let me know what kind of results you've had if so um, and if you are thinking of using it as I said don't forget to use my affiliate link below for some extra credits um, yeah so hope you enjoyed that um, do like subscribe and comment and uh, I will see you in the next video all being well laters Thank mm -hmm. you.